Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here. When I heard that David Tennant would be doing a podcast of his own and interviewing Jodie Whittaker in, on said podcast, I was really worried. I was worried for his future relationship with the fans. I was imagining him being maybe derogatory to the fans. But you know what? I should have known better because he just plays his role on his podcast as someone asking the questions. And this is a very clever move. I don't know what uh, brought David to the decision to do his own, own podcast. I don't know if he's doing any project. We know he's kind of always working on projects, but it's interesting to see a busy actor start taking this kind of podcasting. It's interesting anyway. It's great to see him do it, but I'd rather see him be interviewed than him interview. So let's just talk about this. Now, I haven't listened to the whole interview because I'm not that interested in Jodie Whittaker. But she is the doctor, and it is interesting to see what she had to say. One of the things she said, she was worried that she would destroy the whole thing. She said she's not saying she's been great, but she said she's got it right, but she's not necessarily saying she got it wrong. Um, she, she also seems to think there hasn't been a, a big backlash. She says she is a feminist when David did ask her about feminism. Jodie, let's get one thing in abundantly clear. You you are not a feminist. You have never, ever travelled to the Middle East. You have never, ever tried to stop uh, young women's um, organs being mutilated, yeah? You've never stopped that, which means you are not a feminist, because we need to get something abundantly clear in the modern era. Anyone can go onto Twitter. Anyone with a blue tick can say, I'm a feminist. Men do it, women do it. Saying you're a feminist doesn't make you a feminist. And bringing feminism into Doctor Who, I don't get it. Now, let's discuss the representation element. Um, she, I suppose she thinks she's lit the blue touch paper. She hasn't. And the truth is, the show is destroyed. And the show is not destroyed because she's a female. The show is destroyed because it's been badly written and badly run by Chris Chibnall. But what's abundantly clear by the way she conducts herself in this interview, because she's very, very... Um, her voice is very low, it's very friendly, it's very... Um, I do feel that season 12 is hers and Chibnall's final season. It, it does seem to me that this is a wrap-up. Um, I kind of suspect that David set up this whole podcast just to interview her, and the other people were kind of background. That's what I feel. I feel they wanted to give her a right to reply. I think the BBC decided uh, to do that in... Who better than David Tennant? the most popular doctor, the, the most popular actor to ever play the, the doctor ever. It's easy, isn't it? Now, it's interesting because David was asked if Doctor Who season 11 was too politically correct. And he said, oh, can you can you be too politically correct? So it was a very, very middling answer because he doesn't want to put his flag on any mask. And that's very wise because David makes a lot of money from a lot of conventions because of his popularity as the doctor, and he doesn't want to ruin his relationship with the fans. And this is what concerned me when he decided to get involved with this podcast, decided to start talking to Jodie Whittaker about Doctor Who. Now, if anyone's well-versed to talk to another Doctor Who actor about Doctor Who, um, it, would be, um, it would be David Tennant. What's interesting to me is, um, why hasn't he... You, this is what's um, kind of got my big nose sniffing some very uh, serious doo-doo is, why hasn't he interviewed Matt Smith? Why hasn't he interviewed Peter Capaldi? You know, why doesn't he interview Christopher Eccleston? You know, those kind of interviews, David, will get you a lot of subscribers, but Jodie Whittaker, so she can have a right to reply and say she's a feminist when she's not. I can prove Jodie Whittaker's not a feminist. She's never done anything to advocate the rights of women. Because if she thinks, if she thinks by playing the doctor, by being the first female doctor, that makes her a feminist, then... She's wrong. Being a feminist takes sacrifices. Women who actually um, created real change sacrificed their very lives, you know, their very freedoms to do so. So Jodie Whittaker and people like her and Brie Larson talking about feminism and inclusion, uh, you know, and representation are so insulting to the people who have created said inclusion in the entertainment industry, in the world as a whole. So from the bits that I heard, they weren't particularly controversial, I must admit. When I hear her say, I am a feminist, I'm thinking, but you're not, you're not. You know, please tell me what you've done. 
you know, to help women. You haven't done anything apart from be on a show, get paid lots of money. And she's talking about not being miscast. She's before she's thought she'd been crap. So that was pretty honest and said that um, she, she didn't feel she was miscast as the doctor. I think she was. The only reason she got the role is because she's a friend of Chris Chibnall's because she worked very closely uh, with um, Chris on Broadchurch. And that's why she got the job. So it's, it's pretty simple to me. Uh, and just hearing some of it, I'm glad I didn't listen to the whole thing. But I'm kind of relieved for David Tennant. And I said that on the top of the show. I'm relieved because, as I say, this could have been very, very dangerous. I'm sure there's some people with their daggers out. But I would say he comes out of the whole thing OK, because he's literally just asking questions. Um, he did ask her this thing and when she said she was a feminist. And isn't it more pressure to heap on yourself, not only to be doing this show, but to be labelled to be doing this big thing for feminism? And she didn't particularly answer it. She just answered it by saying, I am a feminist. And that's that, that's just a weird answer. You know, we're not questioning. He wasn't questioning that, Jodie. The point is, isn't it enough to be able to learn your lines and give some nuance to the role? Oh, sorry, I forgot. You haven't given any nuance to the role of Doctor Who. All you've done is impersonated the guy who was interviewing you, David Tennant and Matt Smith. You're not interested in creating your own doctor with her own character traits and having trouble kind of becoming a woman and getting used to being a woman. How amazing would that be? But her and uh, Mr Chibnall weren't interested in that. So um, basically, I haven't subscribed to David's podcast. Um, I probably would have been more interested if he didn't interview her. Um, as I say, I think he was recruited by the BBC to interview her, give her a right to reply. Um, personally, I'm not interested in what she's got to say because she hasn't got anything fresh or anything new. Or to be a bit humble and say, you know what? Having a woman was a big change. Maybe I can understand that a little bit. She's not willing to do that. So at the end of the day, the people who are unhappy because she's a female and she's on Doctor Who aren't going to change their stance because she won't change their stance. I'm not, unha I'm not unhappy because she's a woman playing the Doctor. I believe that, in fact, so many female actors have come to me and said, I can't believe she got it. That, that's what I've heard. And I'm talking about prominent, prominent, really important people saying that. So these people may be going on Twitter saying, oh, she's brilliant. But privately, they're so pissed off that someone got this role because she knew the showrunner and she'd already worked closely with him. Of course, this is... This is the industry, isn't it? This is how you get roles. It's not based on talent. It's based on who you know. Even David Tennant got the role because he had worked with Russell T. Davies on Casanova. You know, and I think even Christopher Eccleston had previously worked with Russell T. Davies. This is how this industry works. But the difference is that Eccleston and Tennant had the talent and actually gave their doctors nuance to work closely with RTD to create a really original doctor. And that's what you've got to do. Her and Chibnall were not interested in doing that. Um, so my final kind of thoughts on this are boring interview, boring person, not, not really worth talking about her that much. She's not going to be remembered as the Doctor. She also said she doesn't just want this to be a moment in time where a female plays the Doctor. Jodie, I don't want that to be the case either. But next time, next time, I hope we have opening casting auditions for the Doctor where men and women and everyone of all kind of backgrounds can kind of audition and apply for the role. And it's not just given to someone because she knows the showrunner. Ultimately, my final, final thought, and this is the final thing I have to say for now about this, is that Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall will finish off on season 12. That will be it. And someone else will take over. I just can't wait to get this nightmare over with and get someone who deserves the role and, loves, and someone to run the show who actually has the passion to make a great show and give us a great doctor.